sometimes we, we, we belittle the Qur'an accidentally. When we see an ayah in the Qur'an that talks about, for example, the camels and how we created it, or when the, Allah says that you are an alaqa, you are a nutfatin min maniyin, or when Allah talks about natural phenomena, what do we do straight away? We say, ah, scientific miracle. This is rubbish. Sorry. This is wrong. Because what we've done, we've made science into a god now. We've deified science. And we've limited the Qur'an. Science changes. I've just spent a whole year studying the philosophy of science on a postgrad level. And I'm telling you, there's no certainty in science. Study it. Just, just Google. Go type in scientific realism. There's a, an anti-realism. Instrumentalism. There's a big discussion on can scientific theories represent the state of affairs? Are they representations of the truth? Or are they just good models? Or are they just useful? It's a big discussion. And all of them agree now that even if you think science gives you absolute truth, it can always change. They are always defeasible. I will bring out my notes, my postgrad notes for you to see now. Because you have some online idiots, no offense, don't want to swear, but you have online idiots from you know, the skeptic tradition and the, the aggressive atheists. They think, oh, you know, science is like wahi, it's like revelation. It's not, it changes. Even if it's a workable theory, right? Even if it's well tested, it changes. If you study the history of science, you see that even workable theories changed. Look at the famous theory of phlogiston. In the 1700s, they had this theory called phlogiston. What phlogiston was is that things that could burn, that were combustible, they had something called phlogisticate phlogiston, and when you burnt it, it released phlogisticated air. It was a theory. It was working in the 1700s. It was working so well that Dan Rutherford in 1772 or 1773, he used this workable theory and he discovered nitrogen. But after a few years later, they rejected phlogiston because they realized it wasn't working anymore. It was falsified. So this shows to us that you can get a truth from a false theory. <laughs> That's the whole point. And things that work could be false because it was working, but then it ended up being false. So you just have to understand when you study the philosophy of science and you study the history of science, you know that these are not absolutes. There's no absolutes. Even when you study induction, which is the method in how they basically formulate scientific conclusions, you see that induction doesn't lead to certainty. Read David Hume. And that's why these people don't even read their own Western philosophy. You know, David Hume, the famous argument that you're always going to have limited observations. How can you conclude for the general? Because you may have another observation that contradicts previous conclusions. Right? And we've seen this with cosmology. They believe in the steady state theory. Now they believe in the Big Bang. Now they don't know what they believe in. There are 17 different models to explain the same data. The data is underdetermined. Meaning that 17 different models explain the same data.